you look right here. Are you comfortable doing that? Yeah, yeah. But I'm listening to you, aren't I? Yeah. I kept two secrets in this house. At any given moment, I felt like I had two closets to emerge from. The first was that my mother was someone that people were aware of. She's a singer, an Australian singer. And I felt as though that was something that I had to keep from people so that they wouldn't treat me differently, which happened quite a bit. My close friends knew who mum was. They'd come over and she'd be baking a cake in the kitchen, so it was pretty obvious. <laughs> who is your mum? Hello, I'm Julie Anthony and I'm Tamara's mum. Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Anthony. Julie Anthony. I can't think of a modern contemporary because she was so theatrical. To describe um, Julie Anthony, I think on stage I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. She did The Sound of Music and all these touring shows as well as performances. And then in later life, she did a lot of jazz shows. <laughs> Mum was really the voice of Australia because she was the anthem lady and they'd call her Julie Anthony. And that's just sort of followed her around for her entire life. <laughs> It's the profile that the anthem gives you and that, that you're in the middle of a stadium as a rule and it's at the beginning of some incredibly important match and so you're a part of that for that fleeting moment. My mum sang the national anthem at every weekend football game as well as the 2000 Olympics. It's afforded some pretty amazing moments and I, I guess the Olympics was the main one. Julie Anthony was the person who, in the wings, had to switch gear and not wonder about what we were going to have for dinner and, and did Tamara or Tally get that homework thing done, I had to go out and be Julie Anthony. But only in my mind I've said I love you. I've always had to, as a mother, try and stay in the background as, as best you can and it's a bit tricky, maybe, if the principal says, would you mind singing at the opening of the whatever? And I've managed to tap dance around most of those. From I realised probably when I was about 11 or 10 that as soon as I would tell people who mum was, especially mothers at school or at a friend's house, they would immediately treat me differently. I registered that it was a tool that I could use if I wanted to in order to make a situation go more positively for me. That was a really bad lesson for me to learn at that time because I was then taught that being not myself was a positive thing. And your second secret? My second secret. I decided to be honest and come out of both of those closets at a really similar time. I was probably about 20 and I remember walking over a bridge with mum. I just decided in that moment that I was going to tell her. So I said, mum, I'm in love with someone and she's a woman. I just kind of looked at her and thought, well, yes. I realised that in that moment that she needed to say it. And I said, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, no, that, that's good, Moo. Um, 
oh, should we go and have a cup of tea? I'm not sure if she really clocked that I was struggling with who I was. So I don't know, I think you'll have to ask her. <sighs> Apart from the fact that she only ever wore shorts and a t-shirt and a hat on backwards. <laughs> Mothers watch their children, don't they? That's what we do. And I thought, uh, maybe it could be, maybe a part of you is already there before they are, in a sense. It wasn't an issue, it was just a fact. And I think might have been a bit of relief there. Oh God, I don't have to deal with a son-in-law. <laughs> I had primed myself for years that this moment was gonna be horrific or hard or like so much leading up to it. Quite disappointing that I, there was no fireworks actually because I was ready. But she was just, just mum about it, which was the best thing she could have done. So fast forward seven years and same-sex marriage is now legal, hooray. And I'm getting married to Eliza, the love of my life, alongside my sister and her husband in a double wedding. And it was just so wonderful to have so many people in the room celebrating us and how far we had come to being who we were and then having my sister and her husband supporting us by standing up there with us and being like, this is equal love. And that was enormous. And my mum sang the national anthem by popular demand. So she sang one verse of it, bless her. She really didn't want to. I would like to think that sooner rather than later, we honour the first peoples of this country and have the appropriate anthem for that. I would stand up and lead the charge. We just need to find out what that is, but I would like it to be pretty soon. Would you like your egg scrambled or poached? Uh, scrambled. Okay. <laughs> so Eliza and I moved back to this house, which is my childhood home, about a year and a half ago now. And we really needed to make it our own. This house used to be secrets for me, and now I'm living my truth, and that's really lovely, because I am being me, but for once. <laughs>